In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the UX Enhancer to extract statistics from the game. But first of all, make sure that the in-game text language is set to the same value or language as your calculator language, because otherwise it will not detect anything at all. Now let's dive into an existing save game to see how it works. So here we see that the requests are received and the server runs correctly. So here I open the statistics. Meanwhile, the UX Enhancer already captured some of the names of the islands. As you can see here, they are presented now to create new islands. Now if we scroll down the list, this list gets expanded. It also captures to which session the island belongs to. Finally, we create new islands using the plus button. Sometimes the enhancer has some trouble to detect the, the correct name. In that case, it may display multiple islands or it's not written correctly. Then you can use the pencil to edit the name. If you create a new island, suggestions with similar names get deleted. The reason behind is that sometimes the UX enhancer detects the same island name multiple times. And to release you of the burden of deleting all these names, this feature is implemented. We uncheck the option to only update the selected island so that we can get updates for all our islands in the calculator. We also check some of the advanced features so that we can use items and trade routes later on. So after we've created the islands we have in our save game, it's time to extract the population counts. So we switch to the population tab. So now we can go through all our islands and will automatically update the population count and the number of houses. The calculator displays the top two population tiers as well as the top five factories. The option highlight missing buildings needs to be checked because then we see the number of existing buildings we've extracted from the statistics page. Otherwise it will display the number of required buildings. The factory summary only displays factories so that you won't find the power plants there. Yeah, sometimes you need to scroll down when the list is longer. If you do this slowly everything should be detected. Only problem is the entry at the most bottom because it's partly cut and not visible. Resort the list so that the entry is at a different place and gets read out correctly. Reading the population count also works on the All Islands view. But the All Islands view is a bit different when it comes to the number of factories that's been built. Because in that case it sometimes happens that you have for example like here, um, factories that have the same icon but can be built in different sessions and are in principle different buildings the calculator needs to distinguish. To make the calculator recognize them we need to expand the entry and then it recognizes the icon and associates it to the correct session or region. Finally, we extract the productivity of each factory. As you can see, the values are updated immediately. The value extracted here is the average productivity. But sometimes you do not want the temporary breakdowns affect the values in your calculator. Keep in mind that you can always uncheck the option to extract the productivity or the number of population. After we have extracted islands, population count, productivity and number of existing buildings, we can set up some trade routes. In this case, for example, we want to supply the heaters with coal. But since we produce our coal in mines, we first need to select that coal should be produced by mines. Afterwards, we can then set up the route to import it from a different island. Another example is wood. We first select the item to produce timber from by number checks. Afterwards we go to the sawmill. There we can export the extra good timber we get from the number checks huts 
to a different island.